Hi, this is Tim from Morial Radio and Morial TV here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, one of the believers, had a question based on Luke chapter 17, verses 34 through 37. Was Jesus referring to the rapture or to judgment? Thank you so much for your question. There are those who say they are taken away to judgment. The others remain for the millennial reign of Christ. Now this is, a, I believe, a mistaken interpretation that is largely emanated from that misguided school of thought we call hyper-dispensationalism. That is, people who take dispensationalism to an extreme and they use a Marcionite hermeneutic. They use the same hermeneutic as the Marcionites of the early church. Not the same Christology. They don't have a false view of Jesus, but a mis-exegesis of scripture based on Marcionite presuppositions. Hyper-dispensationalism. The extreme of this, of course, would be Bullinger, but John Darby was based on, on this wrong kind of thinking. Uh, in any event, it has to be read in the context. If we begin in the previous verse 28, we see that the Lord Jesus uses the rescue of Lot and his family as a type of the rapture. Now, we have a Moriel teaching available on Internet and available, I believe, on Moriel TV or certainly on YouTube called Not Even a Minyan, Not Even a Minyan. We explain in greater depth how the rise of militant homosexuality and lesbianism is something that replays the sins of Sodom and how it'll culminate with the rapture. It'll become so oppressive and aggressive. It'll culminate with the rapture which Jesus here uses to explain what the rapture will be like. That is, the rescue of Lot and his family. Well, we had Lot's wife who turned back, which Jesus uses, he was in the field, not go back for his cloak. He was in the house, not go back for his possessions. Going back for the cloak has to do with the mantle of authority, but going back for the possessions and so forth are those who are clinging on to this world clinging on to this life instead of looking to what's coming with Jesus. This is a picture of what the rapture is going to be like. So read in context, if we begin in verse 28, it's the rapture. Remember Lot's wife in verse 32, Jesus says, whoever seeks to keep his life that is in this life will lose it, and whoever loses his life that is his life in this fallen world will preserve it. Uh, I tell you, on that night, there will be two in bed. Now, the fact that it's the night has a sort of double entendre. Again, we've explained many times that the night is a metaphor for the darkness at the end of the age. But also, this could imply that, again, as the bridegroom always comes in the night, in a figurative sense, it may be literal that the rapture will happen uh, at night. But how could it be night all over the planet at one time? How could that possibly be night all over the planet at one time? When it's night on one side of the globe, it's daylight on the other. But a, a phenomenon is going to come bound up with the prophecies of Joel, of course, when the sun and moon will not give their light. It has to be viewed in the entire context of what Jesus and the Hebrew prophets said about the last days. Nonetheless, I can confidently say that this is about the rapture, to the very best of my understanding. It is about the rapture, read in context. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale 
that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture. The snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo. All available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.